Right boys, we're back. And today I'm gonna to be doing a oil and filter change on my big old bus, being a Suzuki V-Strom 650 2011 plate. Really easy job, so I thought I'd just do a quick video, show you what's involved, what tools you might need, blah, blah, blah. It literally will not take you long at all if you wanna go and attempt this yourself. But first, before we crack on, I wanna show you that I've also put a new chain of sprocket kit on the bike because I'm doing a big trip to Ireland next week. So I thought I'd give the bike a little look over before actually going on this trip. And I found that the chain and sprockets were knackered. The front sprocket's worn. You can see that they're just starting to bend over a little bit as it's starting to wear. So it's a bit naughty. I was gonna just go and attempt just to put a front sprocket on the bike. I mean, the front sprocket's always gonna wear quicker than the rear because this is spinning three times as fast as the rear sprocket, therefore wearing out three times as quick. However, on closer inspection, the where the master link was, I just cut the chain off in the end with an angle grinder, where the master link was, there's so much play, you can see that like back and forth play there. And that was like probably ready to ready to snap to be honest. So Realising the front sprocket was worn out and this link was so worn out, um, I just thought I'd sod it, I'll just do a whole chain of sprocket kit, cost 100 quid on eBay, that ain't too bad. Um, you can see, when I'm looking in there, you can't see any O-rings, so when I bought this bike about a year ago, it did have a new chain of sprocket kit on it, and I've done, granted, quite a few miles, probably about nearly 20,000 miles. Um, but they should last longer than that because I do tend to look after my chains but there's no o-rings in there so I've ever done the job before didn't put the o-rings on the master on the connecting link bit so that's hence why it's worn out you can actually see there's rust it's gone a bit orange and as soon as chain starts showing of signs of orange leaking out of any link area there's obviously water ingress has got in there and worn it out so yeah new chain of sprocket kit and I'm going to treat it to an oil change as well before I go on this big old trip so first things first um, I need to just get an oil pan underneath the bike and I'll show you what, where the sump plug is. So I've just got an oil pan underneath the bike here and the sump plug is on the left side of the bike if you're facing forwards and it's this one here, 14 mil sump plug there. So I've already cracked it off. I've warmed the bike up already, you can either go for a little ride or you can just leave it ticking over on its centre stand for a while just so the oil's nice and warm so it'll flow quicker. Unscrew like that, that one. so be careful because it will come out quick and it's very hot. Be careful not to burn yourself. Quite a long sump plug, like this. There we go. So we'll let that drain until it starts to drip, and then I'll crack off the oil filter, which just literally lives there. Very easy, don't even need to take no fairing off at all. Unlike that thing. So, with the sump plug removed, you can, I do recommend changing the washer. Um, so you just pick that off with a little screwdriver, that just comes off. Today I'm using a genuine Suzuki oil filter and it thankfully come with a new sump plug washer as well, so that's perfect. You can use the high flow ones, um, but I think, because I do a hell of a lot of miles on this and I do extend the oil changes a little bit, I do like to use the genuine Suzuki ones, they're not too much more money. So. I'm going to get this off, the old sump plug washer, put the new washer on and I use this oil filter tool, you reach up in there underneath, put that on the oil filter and then just crack it off. So as you can see I've just reached up there like that with the oil filter tool, put it on the end of the oil filter and then just slowly crack it off and watch your torch go flying. If, you're, if you haven't got one of these oil filter tools, you can just get a pair of water pump pliers up in there and then crack it off that way. Or if, if you wanna make your life easy, you can just take this plastic engine guard off. I mean, it's only literally, I think, four bolts to this side and to the other side. So if you do wanna make your life easier and take that off, do that. But where I've got this tool, I don't even need to. And once that starts to come away, make sure your pan's near the lip there because that will start to drain oil. I only need two hands for this. I can take that tool off now and then spin it off by hand. 
So once the old oil filter spun off, that seating surface where the new rubber O-ring goes onto the engine there, I just like to give that a little wipe, make sure that's nice and clean. And all I'm gonna do is just obviously take this cellophane off, put some old oil around there just as lubrication and then spin the old oil filter, uh, sorry, the new oil filter on. It says once it makes contact, it's two more turns. So really just hand tight really. Don't wanna go over, over tight because when you come to change it, it'd be a nightmare getting it off. So let's do that. As you can see, smear of oil on the actual new oil filter, the O-ring there. Simply just reach up in there, get it started. Spin it on. As soon as it makes contact, two more turns just to compress the O-ring. You can always go a bit tighter if it does leak a little bit when checking for leaks after you start it up, but it shouldn't after two turns as soon as it seats, to be honest. In my opinion, you don't really need the tool either to tighten this up. It's just, it's just made contact there. Just tighten it up, two more turns. So the oil filter was in there. Nice and tight now. I did read the repair instructions actually, um, and it does give you a torque value for this oil filter with repair instructions, although it just says two turns after seating on the oil filter itself, which is the oil filter's torque is 21, no, 20 newton meters. So I did just because I've got a torque wrench here, I torqued it up to 20 newton meters, and naturally, obviously, I had to use the tool for that. So I'm just going to go, I'm only going to recommend now what the repair instructions say is that you do need to tighten that up with the tool and use a torque wrench. Although in the past I have just used my hand to tighten it up as tight as I can get it. So now that's nice and tight, um, I'm gonna put the new sump plug in, or sorry, the sump plug with the new sump plug washer. It's a little magnet on the top here that does get a little bit of fuzz on there. It's a tiny, tiny thin layer of shavings. Shouldn't be any big bits on there, that's something's going catastrophically wrong if you've got big bits of metal hanging off that magnet. It'll only be a tiny little thin film, just as like the gears and the clutch and that wear under normal operation. So I've given that a nice clean off, new sump plug washer on there. I'm gonna screw that back up there and that torques up to 21 newton meters. And whilst tightening it up, you can feel that the new sump plug washer is crushing. That's it, it's clipped, that's done. So that's it, the oil filter's tight. The new sump, or the sump plug washer's crushed and tight. So now I've just got to fill it up with oil and reading up the specs, it says 2.7 liters of oil go in this when you do an oil and filter change. It's 2.4 liters if you just do an oil change. I prefer to do an oil change every single time, to be honest. So, what oil do I use? I tend to use on all my bikes the Silkaline Comp 4 1040 in this bike. I've used it on all my bikes, the Silkaline stuff. I think it's really good, well recommend, and just to use a measuring jug. So fill this right up to the 2,000 millilitres, dump that in, and then another 700 mil. And that's how the, done to the manufacturer's spec. So I've just dumped in the 2.7 litres of oil. Um, the oil level is well past the full, but bearing in mind when we start the bike, it's going to fill up that oil filter. So that'll bring that level down to where it needs to be. So when you do start the bike, um, there might be an oil light on briefly just until it builds up enough oil pressure. And also when you are running it up, just check for any leaks around the oil filter and the sump plug as well, just in case there is any. And then I tend to leave the bike sitting for about 10 minutes on its center stand after the oil filter's been filled up and the engine off, um, just to give the oil level another final check. So it should all be good. Every time I put 2.7 liters of oil in one of these, it does bring it down to the correct level. Might be slightly over the fall, but that's absolutely fine. Right, so after leaving the bike 10 or so minutes, check the oil level, that's absolutely bang on. It's just a hair below the fall, but if it's in between the low and fall mark, roughly halfway is where it needs to be, if it's over halfway, that's fine, providing it ain't 
so high you can't actually see that line where the oil level is anymore. So if that you couldn't, this was completely full, that's obviously overfilled, but 2.7 litres brought that into the perfect range. So yeah, that's it really. I mean, it's an absolute doddle of a job. Anyone can do this, minimal tools required. And yeah, it's absolutely easy and it's done now for a good 5,000 or so miles. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time. Cheers.